strawberry, bubblegum, E16, you got it. Let's talk about cues and cues. and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows. And today we're looking at hues and cues from the op. This is from designer Scott Brady. This is a three to 10 player party clue giving game. Uh, not teams, individuals trying to score lots of points and out clue each other uh, in a color battle. The op was kind enough to send us a copy to check out. So let's take a look at how it's played. Just set up the game, lay out the main board and assign each player a color. Place one of your markers on the score track and hold on to the other two, and then you're ready to begin. On their turn, players will draw a color card from the deck and choose one of the colors shown. They will then give a one word clue and everyone else will take turns placing their marker onto an empty space on the board. For example, if I said boardwalk, Will might place his pawn on I-29. Once everyone has placed their pawn, the clue giver gets to give a second clue, and this time they can use two words. In reverse turn order, players will get to place a second pawn. The clue giver then reveals their specific color and places the scoring frame on the board to see which points each player will earn. The dead center awards three points, inside the box gives two points, and if you are just outside the frame, you earn one point. The score giver receives points for everyone inside the square, and then it's the next player's turn. Once everyone has had the opportunity to give clues once or twice, the game ends and whoever has managed to score the most points wins. Hughes and Cues features this fantastically large board covered in a beautiful gradation of colors. The components for the game are very simple and so are the rules, which makes it really great to be able to jump into easily, uh, but also gives you a lot of freedom to do a lot of really fun things with. Uh, in the game, you're going to choose one color uh, from the four off of the card that you draw, and then you're going to give a one word clue. Uh, everyone will place one token, and when they do, whoever is first or second may have a little bit of an advantage in some ways because uh, they're they have any space on the board available to them once you can't go on a space where somebody else has already chosen. But if you're further down the line, you get a little bit of an idea where everyone thinks that that color may be. Um, so there's that. And then the clue giver gives a second clue and that second clue can kind of help and hopefully not hurt um, if they went too green and you need it to be a little more blue, you can give a clue that's a little more towards um, getting them to guess towards blue instead of towards green. So there's all these little nuances of your clue that you can help them narrow in on that one area around hopefully the exact space that you want them to guess. Yeah, the only real rule in the game as far as clue giving is that you can't say a specific primary color so you can use brand names or, or you know popular products that everybody kind of associates with specific colors. Being mindful of those is a lot of fun. We've actually kind of put additional restrictions on some of our games like we're going to only try to use colors from you know brand names or from movies or whatever and so that gives you a whole nother flavor of gameplay that you can have in the game. We've also had a lot of success playing this virtually which is neat. I was a little unsure about like color calibrations and all those issues but because the game is really kind of about the psychology of like helping your team get to where they need to be on the board, I think you could even play this. We haven't tried it yet with Ryan, but I think you could even play it with colorblind players because mm -hmm. it's really about judging like what was their, their second clue based on the first clue, how much did they try to push us in a new direction, mm -hmm. uh, everybody else went in this area, okay, I'm picking the middle. Sometimes splitting the difference is the key to just getting those big points. Uh, it's a lot of like mental exercises as you're trying to give a clue that will get your team to do something that they're familiar with onto the board. Really interesting. Yeah, and some of those clues, like say you give a clue like strawberry milkshake, 
um, somebody who is colorblind already has in their mind that perceived color, even though it may not be what other people are seeing visually, they can still narrow in on those clues. Um, if you wanna play with kids, one option you can use is to let them choose any color out on the board um, that they can think of a clue for and have them write it down secretly so that they can remember what color they picked, what space they picked on the board, and then that can help speed things up. Um, hues and cues may kind of um, push out code names a little bit for me from gameplay. Um, I don't think it's a replacer, but um, it narrows down the clue giving to just one word and it's just anything that's associated with that color instead of trying to coordinate all these objects or words that some of them have multiple meanings. I, I just need to find one thing that I can think of that's that color to give as a clue. Um, that simplifies it down, but still you're thinking about all different kinds of objects and things that is perceived for other people that it might be. Yeah, I would agree that this has probably less downtime. One of the other things that we've done to increase that even more is give everybody a card at the beginning so you can kind of already be thinking of your clue. Uh, it's definitely a different experience because code names, whether it's pictures or words, is going to be you know, associations of things. I guess this is associations too. Um, I felt like it was a very different experience in mm -hmm. general. I, I uh, and because you're not on teams, because it is individual, like you're working really hard to make sure you give <laughs> the perfect clue so you can score all nine little points, you know, on the inside of your thing. You're going to have higher player, player, the higher player count you have, the more points you're going to score, which is also fun. Uh, and it goes by pretty quick, which is neat. You feel like, oh, I just gave my second clue. That was it. I'm done. That's all the, all the clues I get to give. Uh, so yeah, really fun experience. Great for families, great for online, great for in general. So interesting stuff for sure. Yeah, And I think this is kind of what I wanted Pantone to be. I find Pantone to be very difficult and because you can just choose anywhere on the board, um, and it doesn't, it, it matters if you're right or wrong, but you know, being one space off, you're still going to get some points. I, I find this a much easier game than Pantone. If using cues looks like something you'd be interested in, check it out from The Op. Should be available very soon. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We always appreciate when you subscribe, like, and comment. So do that now, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, tell them to finish another five minutes, and then whenever we're done shooting, we'll come kick them okay. off. You see that parenting right there? <laughs>